Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. For today's video, I wanna cover some data for Q1 for Tesla and the auto market. Tesla, I really think is setting up for a really great Q1 as well as for the rest of the year and really the decade with some of the trends we're seeing in the auto market. So without further ado, let's get started. We have a lot to go through. Dix, Frank Z, Alex L, Ishan C and Daniel G. Thank you so much for joining the channel or rejoining the channel again. You can do that as well by clicking on join right below this video. You get access to exclusive content on Fridays as well as to, uh, access to our private Discord. So let's start with China numbers. Roland Percher on Twitter. Last week, 15,886 Teslas were insured in China. This means that we already have a new record quarter one week before the end of the quarter, which bodes obviously extremely well for Tesla with some of the fears around demand in that region. In the first month, it did 27,000. So this is for January, 34,000 in February, 65,000 in March, which is the usual trend where you start slow, you end the month uh, great, which is a trend for China. It's already at a record. So congratulations, a Tesla China team. And here's a weekly look at the data, starting with the first week through the end of the week. Green is 2022, yellow is 2023. Performed really well in the last few weeks, which put it above, and we still have about half a week to go for that yellow bar for 2023. So that number should be even higher for Q1 for Tesla China. So we have a record China quarter for Tesla in Q1 already with some days to go, which bodes really well for that region, especially around some of the fears around demand and the economic turmoil that's going on in that region. Shifting over to Europe, if we look at Norway, here's 2023 Q1 data from JPR, another great follow on Twitter. Tesla did about 8,000 units in the quarter so far. Volkswagen Group at about 5,000. And then you have Toyota and others uh, around the 2,000 or less region. This is for pure battery electric vehicles so far in Q1. There's more coming in for the rest of the quarter, obviously. And this is with four models. Tesla has achieved this uh, record level, really, uh, with about 40%. EV market share in what's called a saturated EV market because there's a lot of EVs being sold in that area. EVs are about two thirds of total car sales in that region. And uh, Tesla was able to perform that well so far in Q1 with only four models. If we look at the rest of the uh, European inventory, so th thinking about it from an inventory perspective for new cars, you can see since about middle of February, we have a consistent decrease in inventory for European Teslas. Uh, SNX have been sort of flat. They are more expensive cars, so you're not going to see nearly as many sales. But for Model 3 and Y, 3 in the red, Y in the blue, consistent decline inventory, which points to good sales in the region, especially as Tesla. Tesla has been ramping up volume. Berlin just hit a 5,000 weekly unit number uh, in the last few days. If we compare this to the population density of each country, I kind of want to point out some interesting data sets around Tesla right now. You have Russia, Turkey, Germany, France, United Kingdom as the five largest. Tesla doesn't sell any units in Russia uh, right now, or I don't know if they ever will. And then Turkey is just unveiling uh, their Tesla sales starting on April 4th of this year. So Tesla hasn't sold any cars in the second most populous country in Europe, and now they will start, which is a great sign for that brand. If you look at inventory levels in Germany for Model 3 and Y, you can see there's been a consistent decrease since about uh, the middle of February with some evening out in the last few weeks, probably due to Berlin right-sizing the inventory in that area, which bodes well for that region. France, you see a steady decrease since the middle of February as well, so showing very healthy demand. Looks like Tesla will have to figure out how to increase supply in that region. And then uh, Great Britain, UK area, same exact thing, consistent decrease since about the beginning of March, um, really returning to levels, inventory levels before uh, earlier in the quarter, but again, shows to healthy demand in that region. If you're enjoying this content so far, we'd love to throw me a like. It helps the uh, YouTube algorithm show this to more people. Thank you so much. And if you want to see more content from me, click on subscribe. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. I also have a newsletter on Substack. You can sign up by clicking on my link right below this video in the description, farzadmisbahi.substack.com. Weekly newsletter on Wednesday about the world of auto, EVs, uh, AI, automation, energy, all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for your support. If you look at the U.S. inventory levels, we see very similar patterns. Uh, they've stayed pretty low for the three and the Y. Uh, recent uptick in inventory. Curious if this is because of uh, additional production in Austin. Curious to see if there is any sort of other demand things happening in the region. If there's going to be any end of uh, quarter push for this region as well. But they are relatively low, especially compared to legacy auto. So again, pretty healthy demand 
in the U.S. We also have some data from Cox Automotive, which is a firm that collects data uh, for the U.S. market for auto. Some interesting trends here uh, for Q1 projections for the end of the quarter. Obviously, we still have some days to go, but this is some preliminary data, some early data. Tesla is about middle of the pack with 180,000 units sold thus far or projected for Q1 2023. And then you can see that uh, quarter over quarter for Q4 versus Q1, Tesla is going to sell 37% more units in Q1 versus Q4 of last year, which is significantly higher than any other automaker. Even Lucid, which starts at a very low base, Tesla is outperforming them all uh, in a seasonally slow quarter in Q1 because of winter. It's usually a slow quarter for auto. This also means that Tesla is going to gain the largest market share uh, out of any automaker uh, quarter over quarter, essentially. So Q1 versus all of year 2022. Uh, Q1 has... Uh, at, uh, Tesla ended up at 5.1% market share, which is an additional 1.4% market share versus uh, basically full year 2022, more than anybody else, which again points to Tesla's hogging. It's <laughs> taking more. It's more for me, more for me. I think about it that way. In a tough economic environment, Tesla will post a record quarter, which I think is uh, very important here, especially in a seasonally slow quarter in Q1. Tesla will have two things going against it, a slowing economy and a seasonally, seasonally low auto quarter and Tesla will post a record quarter in that quarter. Pretty impressive if you ask me. If I were to guess, probably delivery is going to come in around 430,000. Uh, we'll get data around this probably this weekend and I'll really put together that data with my final projections for the quarter and see how the quarter ends up. So if you do want to see that video, make sure to subscribe uh, right below. Now, around the comment with uh, sort of a tough econ economic environment, I want to point out some data sets here that I think are very imp uh, interesting. One in 11 U.S. borrowers is now being rejected for an auto loan. This is from car dealership guy, great follow on Twitter. Auto loan denial rate rose to 9.1% in February, a six-year high and up from 5.8% in October. So you can see that you know the effects of increasing the rates and making it tougher for people to afford these banks, especially some of the bank fillers that we'll be having right now, are becoming much more uh, picky about who gets a loan. And so this obviously is going to continue to further further slow any demand around vehicles, any and all vehicles. Some other interesting data points that make this situation even more complex. 2023 new vehicle inventory is up 70% since last year, but still down nearly 50% since 2019. Each one of these colors is the year. So 2019 is gray, light blue is 2020, so on and so forth. You can see that 2023 is sort of at this 1.5 to 1.7 million new vehicle inventory level in the United States, yet it's significantly lower than the other years and hasn't really recovered in a way that you would expect coming out of COVID. This is in, you also add this sort of data set that says from the FRED, domestic auto production, this is monthly production from domestic um, automakers here that are making cars in the United States. You can see that it's been consistently down since really the, the end of 2015 going into 2016. We've had consistent lowering domestic auto production, which is obviously going to impact how much new inventory there is out there, especially if people are still buying cars. And then you also have this weird thing going on in the new and used uh, inventory market for vehicles. You have the new inventory market starting to rebound since really the, the, the end of last year. Uh, it's been going steadily up, but still at levels much lower than historical. But then you have the used car market inventory coming down dramatically, basically at record lows, which is quite a fascinating development here. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below what you think is going on. My gut tells me is people are waiting to get the car that they really want new, that they can afford. And I wonder how many of those are EVs and I wonder how many of those are Teslas. So curious to hear your thoughts around that. You also have used car prices. Used car prices are going up and you have new car prices already high, which is going to create a tougher environment for people to afford vehicles. Again, making it tough to afford a car in this environment. And then you also have this weird thing going on with these low levels of inventory where most automakers, really any automaker past this guy right here, which is Mercedes-Benz, has above 60 days supply of inventory on already historically low inventory figures, which means that people are not really buying that many cars and 
on cars that are not being made that often. <laughs> so people are really not buying cars. That's the, kind of what I'm getting out of here. And yet Tesla will post that sort of record quarter, which again, with that backdrop is quite, quite impressive. Uh, Chrysler, Jeep, Buick, Volvo, Alfa Romeo have days of supply above 100 days. And Tesla is right around nine, uh, probably a little bit less uh, with some of the recent numbers coming in. Near record low inventory in the auto market, above healthy days of supply, and near record low production is the kind of environment that we are in right now. And so we are here because car makers have and continue to limit production to mostly profitable SUVs and trucks. So they'll make a lot of money on those, but you won't see as many because you can't make as many as, say, an affordable, I don't know, $25,000 car. And these also make a ton of money for the for the car makers. But now we're at the point where nobody can afford them because <laughs> they're so freaking expensive. So what happens is Tesla continues to ramp production and lowers price. This is really a question I want to ask everybody. And I would love to hear your, your thoughts around this in the comment section below. If we're in this kind of uh, environment, wouldn't you think that if a Automaker comes in with a very affordable car as they pump out more and more units that they would get outsized market share because of how sort of broken <laughs> the auto industry is. I would love to hear your thoughts below in the comment section. I really think this will be Tesla's formula for the rest of the decade. Increase production through the ramp of Berlin, Austin, introduce Mexico and these other sites, get the Model Y and the three as cheap as humanly possible, pump them out like crazy. And then obviously introduce Cybertruck here at the end of the year. We're starting to see more mules of this out in the streets. Typically, if you look at Model 3 and Model Y, about six months before they really started delivering these cars, we started seeing these alpha, beta, uh, production units. So I believe Cybertruck will probably launch somewhere towards the end of Q3, October, September-ish, if I were to guess. And then you also have this $25,000 car, which was announced uh, announced <laughs> back in Battery Day in 2020, 2021, with a tag of $25,000. Not really sure if it would be around that price, but there is a tweet from Elon later in this video that I really want to highlight that maybe it does point to this. I also did a drive with my wife yesterday for FSD beta version 11.3.3. You can find that video on my channel. Uh, and uh, she was very, very impressed. And my biggest takeaway with the latest version of FSD is that it really does feel like it's almost, it's almost there, man. It's really almost there. It was very, very impressive. And her reaction, I think, told a, a very big story because she's a, she is not very trusting <laughs> of these things. And she was quite impressed. So if you're interested in seeing that, I think that might be a helpful data set for people that are tracking the progress of full self-driving. Now, after that drive, I went on Twitter and I said, mind blowing to me that Tesla was able to reach this level of autonomy with a car without Dojo, which is Tesla's internal chip that will make their processing of data for this full self-driving uh, software faster and better. And 10% of the fleet sending data back. They only have about 400,000 cars doing FSD and they have about 4 million cars out there in the world. Add this tech to a compact $25,000 car and I don't think the world is ready for what's about to happen. To which Elon replied, wild times ahead for sure. So I don't know what this means. <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. But it does seem like... Um, from my end, I'm seeing some legitimate, legitimate data points that say that full self-driving is going to be finalized. Uh, who knows? This year. Who knows? But I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to, if you're using FSD Beta 11, drop it in the comment section below so we can get some data set around how it's performing for you. Um, and really, my big message here is probably, you know, don't forget about FSD. It does seem like it's starting to hit a stride. That is quite impressive. And with my wife reacting the way she did, um, yeah, I think there, there's some good things ahead. But not investment advice. I don't know what I'm talking about. But you might, and you probably will. <laughs> so drop a quick comment in the section below and let me know what your thought is about all the things I put together here. If you want to support the channel, I have some merch in the description below. You can click on the link. Here are some shirts. I also have other ones as well, hoodies, all kinds of good stuff. And then you can also support the channel by using my coupon for Athletic Greens, which is a supplement I use every single morning. With that coupon, you'll get free travel packs and vitamin D. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was informative and helpful. And we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.